So right now at this moment, we take authority over Dorian that has no right off the coast of this state or anywhere. And we hit that storm to the east right now. And I'm gonna do it three times. This is Kat Kerr. If you're unfamiliar, she's notorious as a weather warrior. This is an example of her hitting a storm to the east so that it wouldn't hit her home state of Florida. I think that's where she lived at the time. This is from 2019. Eventually, the hurricane did go on to do countless amounts of damage, but she just pretends it didn't. She's an evangelical, a televangelist, claims to be a prophet of God, claims to receive divine information from him, claims to be a conduit through which God channels his power and sends information to the world through her. Now, she's not just some lone nut in the middle of nowhere who nobody pays attention to. She has a real audience that listen to her. She is extremely influential in a number of cults. She writes the curriculum for some religious private schools. We have to take this woman seriously. She has a far bigger audience than me, like not even close. So it's entertaining to watch her swing her little stick at things, and I definitely get a good chuckle out of it, but we do have to take her seriously. So here's the question. We had a hurricane recently in Florida, um, Hurricane Ian, I think was the name of it, and that just so happens to be where our old buddy Cat Kerr lives. So being the weather warrior that she is, she must have been able to swing that little stick around and protect Florida, right? Unfortunately, it didn't work that way. Cat Kerr did, as a matter of fact, order that hurricane somewhere else, but interestingly enough, it didn't go there, as she expected. So what was her response to the fact that she unequivocally, obviously, failed to push this hurricane off course that completely devastated Florida? If you're living five years in the future and don't know about Hurricane Ian, it was a Category 5 by the time it made landfall in Florida. That's the biggest a hurricane can be on planet Earth, from my understanding. It cannot get faster than that. The wind speeds can't. Like, according to physics, wind speeds can only reach a, a maximum speed on Earth, and that hurricane was within those bounds. And it did untold amounts of damage. So where was Kat Kerr? Where was she while this hurricane was ramming into her home state? You know where she was? She was with the rest of the refugees. Let's listen to her explanation for why she couldn't prevent this hurricane from hitting. Or why she couldn't prevent the other hurricane in 2019 from hitting either. This is from September 2022. So are you ready? Are you weather warriors? You know what we do? We come against the storm itself. We name that storm. We come in the host of heaven to go in there and shred all the bands of the storm. We're going to come in the pressure to rise in that storm. When the pressure rises in the storm, okay, it sucks the life out of that storm. It begins to dissipate. That's why we do it. So are you ready, everybody out there? Let's do this. We say... We say, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, this storm Ian, this storm Ian has no right, has no right to crush, to crush harm, harm, destroy, destroy, destroy any person, any person, any property. Any property. We rule, we rule on this earth, on this earth, Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, according to His word, according to His word. So right now, so right now, we command the host of heaven, we command the host of heaven. To get in that Ian, to get in that storm, and Ian, begin to shred the bands and begin to shred the bands storm. and surround that storm. Cause it to dissipate. Cause it to dissipate. We command the pressure. We command the pressure to rise in that to storm. Rise in that storm. Because, because it sucks the life. Because it sucks the life. And the energy, and the energy out, of the storm. out of the storm. Her big thing is getting people to repeat what she says immediately after her. I don't know why. I'll show you some more examples of that in a minute, but. Yeah, that didn't really work out, did it? Unfortunately for Florida, I would have loved it if Cat Kerr Weather Warrior really did have the power to force a storm to not run into something or whatever. I would love that. It's very evident to me that she is 
lying or delusional, one or the other. Either she believes she has a magical power that she does not have, or she wants you to believe she has that magical power, knowing she doesn't. So we command it to rise, we rise, command it to rise, 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 rise. And dissipate. And dissipate. We are not tolerating. We are not tolerating. Any death threats. Any death threats. From hell. From hell. Or that storm. Or that storm. We also. We also. Take authority over the wind. Take authority over the wind. That you will not. You will not. Bring damaging winds. Bring damaging winds. You will not cause that storm. You will not cause that storm to increase. In any way whatsoever. In any way whatsoever. Wow, that one didn't come true either, did it? She was simply wrong. Now, here's my question. There were evacuation orders for an awful lot of people within Florida. Did what she said here prevent any of her followers from leaving, from evacuating? Did it prevent her from evacuating? Because she's ordering this storm around. She did the same thing to Hurricane Dorian, if you remember. Your end is coming. We don't tolerate your presence. We won't tolerate you coming ashore anywhere or causing any harm, death, or destruction. It didn't work then. It didn't work now. Is she ever going to wake up to the fact that she does not have the powers that she believes to have? As it turns out, she did go with the, the refugees to shelters after the storm came and ran into Florida. Do you want to hear her response after fleeing to the safety shelters? Listen to this. This is immediately after the storm, after she finally got safe. I never intended, just so people know, the weather warriors have very specific um, assignments when one starts to come, when it's in the midst of it, and even after it's done. Specific assignments about when hurricanes come around, okay. Off the coast or something. I know that about maybe probably close to a third of America is in drought, actually. A lot of it's in drought. So I fully intended to send that storm all the way up around the coast to where those drought areas were. Oh, okay. So she didn't want to dissipate the storm. She didn't want to destroy it. She just wanted to send it somewhere else. Fascinating. And if one comes again, I'm going to send it out over the, the west because they, they really are in serious drought and i think california's had fires already okay so is that what she did did she send the storm up out to california hurricane ian no she didn't hurricane ian ran straight through florida and continued up the east coast what happened to your magical powers uh have had fires but we won't have any fires here we had plenty of rain and I'm not uh, ignoring the fact that it did some damage down in Tampa, but that wall of faith that we built is all along the East Coast. So I'm going to have to get with a group seriously on the West Coast and teach them how to build that wall of faith. So she orders the hurricane to not do any damage, and then it does damage. And she, her response, her excuse here is, it would have done more damage... If we hadn't built a wall of faith, you're lucky that we were here, or it could have been even worse. From my understanding, the storm didn't do massive damage to Tampa. I thought it did massive, dam massive damage to Fort Myers, or Fort Lauderdale, I think. I don't remember exactly what got hit the worst, but... Beautiful day for a storm. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hey guys. Um, this is the current condition in my house. God hope you never have to see this at your house. What we all fear in life come true today. So, God bless everybody out there trying to uh, make it through this, and I hope you make it through all right. So, see you on the other side. It completely ravaged some areas of Florida. It really wrecked everything. It was one of the worst hurricanes that we've seen in modern history from my understanding. So yeah, Kat Kerr is just completely full of it from top to bottom, naturally. This is not the first time she's tried to control the weather, obviously, nor will it be the last time. Check this one out. So we're gonna start with Imelda. Let me use my little red pointer here. It is right here, let me find it. I think this is it right here. It's in the, it's in the Gulf, is that correct, Jen? Yes. It's in the Gulf. 
And you know why this whole hole is churned out? It's from all the storms of the past coming in and tearing up stuff. Wow. She believes that the Gulf of Mexico is there in the first place because hurricanes have come through and destroyed the land. Interesting. Uh, I would say that's probably because of tectonic plates, but, you know, I'm not a geologist. What happened? Well, this is just a tropical disturbance, I believe, right here, but it is bringing some flooding to Texas. So what do you say about that? You know, I, I have to wonder, like, if she believes that a hurricane is the reason why the Gulf of Mexico exists, because it kept hollowing out parts of the land, how long does she think that took? Something as grand as hollowing out the Grand Canyon took, like, millions and millions of years. And she's talking just eroding an entire area of land the entire Gulf of Mexico, and she believes that happened from hurricanes? Am I reading this correctly? This is just a tropical disturbance, I believe, right here, but it is bringing some flooding to Texas. So what do you say about that? We command it to, dis we command it to dissipate, the rains to dissipate, we command the floodwaters to go down. If you're there in Texas, get out and stomp on the ground. And so you command the waters to go down in Jesus' name. So this is our first one, and Mel, right there. It's not going to grow any stronger. It's already come ashore here. And did it work out for Cat Kerr? Of course it didn't, because guess what? She can't control the weather. Take a look at this prediction. It's not weather-related, but it is a prediction that she made. I believe she made this in 2020 or 2019. So I declare, so I declare. the upcoming election... <laughs> In 2020, the one you have chosen will win in a landslide. Ouch, yeah, that's pretty specific. You will show your favor over that administration and give them new things to do to help our country be greater than it ever was before. Yeah, that's uh, that's awkward. I'm sorry, Kat. That that one didn't really work out for you, did it? Eventually, she came out on air and just lost her mind because she was wrong over that. I say this is my land, and these are my people, and I have raised them up for such a time as this. My people have prayed. They have fasted. They have called on my name, and I will not turn a deaf ear unto them, but to the lost, to the wicked, to those who chose to cheat and steal and lie, they shall have every curse come upon them. Yeah, so needless to say, she's very upset when she found out that Trump lost, uh, despite the fact that she claimed God was going to make him win, despite that. Interestingly enough, I also got a recording of her talking about going to heaven and seeing a body parts warehouse. She goes to heaven, walking around, and she sees eyeballs lying in a bin. Just listen to this. This one is 2018, so late September 2018. Talking about the Body Parts Warehouse yeah. earlier. Yeah. And uh, how all that happens. You know, how do you requisition heaven to release a body part if you're praying for a friend or a family member that really needs something, you know, they need surgery, uh, their liver, their heart, whatever part... They actually do have a body parts warehouse in heaven, and several people have been there and seen it. And it does look like a warehouse, but not like what you would see here. It's very supernatural. It's an amazing building, but they actually have a protocol on how they operate, like sort of like what we do here on the earth. They actually have a huge reception. Uh, the counter that this reception is in is like the universe is in this whole... Uh, counter as you're looking down you're seeing creation and creativity all over in the universe while you're waiting <laughs> waiting and what happens is when someone prays in faith and and asked for a body part to be sent they say i asked for a requisition to be given to the body parts warehouse that my friend needs a new heart or they need new eyes whatever that requisition is when that prayer is released it's sent to this body parts warehouse and they will call for an angel to come from the back of the mm -hmm. warehouse and they will hand them this requisition, which is the request. They then take it into this other place. I haven't been in the other place, but I know they're getting it approved. 
She claims to have been in this main place that she's describing, this body parts requisition warehouse, though. This whole thing is absolutely disconnected from reality in every way. She thinks that heaven operates like Earth does. Why doesn't God just snap his fingers and create a new heart for you instantaneously? I mean, let's really start poking holes in this. Do they have storage freezers at this requisition warehouse? Do they have to keep the body parts cold until they're used? How do they store them? Do you apply for these jobs? Is this something that you have to submit an application to do? Is this a private company that was set up or did God set this up? I really want to know. This is absolutely unglued from reality. No joke. It has to be stamped to prove for this time or else they would stamp it for another time. The body parts warehouse has been established. It's been in heaven for a very long time. And I actually was present in a meeting when the body parts were sent down from heaven. So let me go back a little bit because when they go in that room and it stamps... Oh my God, there's more? There is more lore to build out here? When that room and it stamped approved, that angel goes to the back of the warehouse where there are thousands of bins. Why is there an approval process? Why don't they just give people repaired equipment if they need it like clear see-through bins not plastic ones it's like they're sustained by nothing they're like suspended they're just suspended in the air these bins and they will go in there and if it was for new eyes they go collect the two eyes by the way they're alive and living the hearts are beating the eyes are seeing wow once again why keep them around in a bin in the first place why don't they create them on the spot what blood type are they? Do they have to be refrigerated? She says that the, the hearts are beating and the eyes are seeing and everything. What DNA is connected to this stuff? Is there ever an incompatibility? Like if you get an organ transplant on Earth, you have to take medicine to prevent your body from rejecting that transplant. I know it's kind of silly to poke holes in this stuff, but it has to be done. This is how you break through... The ridiculousness, the brainwashing, the propaganda point out inconsistencies like this. Now, if you're in a face-to-face -face situation, you would handle it a little bit differently, obviously. You don't want to cause the backfire effect by criticizing them and calling them out and pointing out inconsistencies to their face. That's a good way to get them to shut down and walk away from the conversation. But generally speaking... Finding these inconsistencies is very important. The whole thing is completely ridiculous from top to bottom. In these transparent bins that are just suspended in air, they're in an orderly manner, like you go down rows and you get whatever body parts are needed for that person. But all these parts are alive because there is life in heaven no matter where you go. And they take them, this is, this is a wonderful part, they take them then when they've got them and they put them in a box and gift wrap them. And I know people would say, that is so weird, why would they do it? Because this is a gift from God. Okay, so they take a beating heart and they put it in a gift box while it's still beating. Go on. This is not something they could do for themselves or get themselves. This was God uh, being moved either by the faith of the person asking or the faith of the person who d desperately needs this. And I can't determine why when or how I just know this happens and so they will get them put them in a gift box the angels will come down to earth and they walk through that person with these body parts they walk through them with a the gift box and they walk through the person and come out the other side and the box is gone and the parts have been put in the body is there any evidence of this at all I will take anything of course there isn't she claims to know because she visited heaven personally herself she claims to visit heaven on a regular basis, like every day. She goes to heaven, hangs out with God, touches his hair, and paints pictures of him. And she claims to have actual pictures. She says an angel flew over her house and she took a picture with a real camera. She claims to have pictures of this, but wouldn't you know it, they never materialize. You know, I wouldn't think anything of this if she weren't as influential as she is. Unfortunately, she's extremely influential, so we have to talk about her. 
I actually came across this clip, too, of Kat Kerr talking about manipulating the weather and how it's your responsibility to do so. Listen to this one. Or for Kat, I was wondering when we pray over areas, like for me, it's praying over Ohio and Indiana against tornadoes. Do we need to be called to a certain area or can we pray over any area? The reason I ask is because I felt led to pray over my two states and have since I was very young. But I remember, and she names the name of a teacher, a prophetic teacher. She said, I remember years ago, this teacher saying, you're asking for trouble, my paraphrase, she said, if you pray over territories that you're not called to pray over, which I did after Kentucky got hit so hard by tornadoes in December, they stopped at the Ohio border. I prayed for Iowa and Minnesota when they were expecting an outbreak of tornadoes. And immediately after that, I got COVID. Wow. Completely made up, of course. The entire thing is completely made up. I don't know who this supposed prophet was that was telling her that you have to be careful about what areas you pray over or whatever. Let me give you a little inside information from the scientific community here. Prayer doesn't do anything for anybody. It works roughly at the rate of random chance. We've done lots and lots of studies on this stuff. We know without a shadow of a doubt that prayer does not do anything for anybody. Now, that doesn't mean God's not real. It just means he's not answering prayers. Or or it could mean he has a master plan in place and answering your prayer would mess it up. As George Carlin says, what's the point of a master plan if every schmuck with a $2 prayer book can come along and fuck up your plan or something like that? You can feel free to pray over anything you want, but trust me, it's not going to change the circumstances, for better or worse. And this poor woman in the question believes that she prayed for Ohio or Kentucky or whoever to get better after tornadoes, and she thinks she got COVID because she did it. That is sad. So she's wondering, did she do that to herself because she prayed over a state that she didn't have authority over? That had nothing to do with you, except you probably terrified the enemy by doing it. Any believer has the right to be over the weather. I will say this. The area you live in, the state that you live in, you have a greater level of authority. Completely made up. Once again, it's all completely fabricated. The Bible says nothing about the authority that believers have over different areas or whatever else. It does not say if you live in Ohio and you pray for Kentucky, then you will catch COVID out of retaliation or some other nonsense. This is completely made up. But you really can take authority. And I do want to remind you, the Holy Spirit again is saying something to me. He said, remind them, Jesus was in the storm when he stopped it. So you have greater authority wherever you are present. So no matter what state you're in, if you're present when something comes up, you totally have the right to take authority over that system, that storm. Uh, There's nothing wrong with that. Jesus uh, was definitely over the weather no matter where he went. And when we were in Israel, I spoke and dispelled the fog that they said would be there for 25 minutes around the boat. And I spoke and within minutes it was gone. Within minutes, it was gone. Okay, so let me lay out a scenario. She goes to visit Israel. Pretty cool. Never been. Sounds like a fun trip. She gets on a boat, and the captain tells her, usually there's a fog that kind of encircles the boat for the first 25 minutes around this time. She says she prayed for the fog to dissipate, and within minutes, it did. How many minutes, Kat? You think about 25? I'm just throwing a number out there. If the things that she says were actually true, we could verify them with scientific studies. If the things that she believed were true, Florida would never, ever experience a hurricane because she lives in Florida. What? She doesn't want to be evacuated, right? Weirdly, Florida gets hit by hurricanes just as often as it ever did. Weird, right? It's almost like reality is not bending to fit what she believes it should it's like she made it up all along you would like to think you don't and people who've never learned this or even searched out what it said about that you should understand that that jesus is an example of what we can do that's why he did these miracles it wasn't just so he could be known it was so that we also could step into that place like him 
walking in the authority he gave us. If we have power over all the power of the darkness and the enemy, the enemy causes severe weather. That's not a natural thing. And I know the scientists would say it was. I love it. I absolutely love it. Well, the thing is, we can prove this without a shadow of a doubt. We know exactly how extreme weather appears. We know what factors cause it, and we can prevent that severe weather by changing this thing or that variable or whatever else. But she doesn't want to accept that because she wants to live in a magical world where she can control the things around her. She believes that she's capable of ordering Donald Trump to be installed as president. We saw how that went. She believes she's capable of ordering Hurricane Ian to not run into Florida and make a complete mess out of everything. We saw how that went, too. She lives in a fantasy land, and bizarrely, every time she's wrong about something, it digs her deeper into her belief system. The enemy causes severe weather. That's not a natural thing, and I know the scientists would say it was. But what they're not right. They don't know, understand the spiritual side of things or the unseen realm. My mistake. I guess I'm just a dummy, huh? I should listen to Kat Kerr more instead of scientists. You can make an effect on any severe weather, no matter what it is, wherever you are personally. But other than that, where you live, like Florida is my greatest level of authority, although now he actually says, I speak worldwide about things. Yeah, this is an older video, so January 12th, 2022, I believe. So it was before Hurricane Ian ran into Florida. But she claims to have the greatest authority over Florida's weather. And she's also special in the sense that God gave her authority over the entire world. Wow. We're looking at somebody special, people. But I'm just talking about right now about the weather. Any okay. weather system that would be destructive, you absolutely, and you proved that by what you did. And we have way too many testimonies that we, we know that we have the right to stop storms. Way too many testimonies. Fascinating. Well, here's the thing, Kat. I need more than testimony. I need more than anecdotal evidence. You know what? Anecdotal evidence is absolutely worthless to me. I need data. I need hard facts, hard evidence. Let's do a double blind study. Let's have a set of non-Christians praying over the storm and a set of Christians praying over another storm. We can set this up. Let's find a storm that nobody is praying over and see what happens. We can run the scientific tests and determine if this is real or not, if this is a real effect. Ever notice? I mean, she's filthy rich. She's extremely famous. She has the money to fund a study like this. Not to mention the fact that studies like this have already been done. Isn't it interesting that she never yields to those studies, never defers to them, never talks about them, pretends they don't exist at all because it's more convenient for her to believe and, to, and for her followers to believe that she and they have the power to control the weather. But when push comes to shove and a hurricane rams into her home state of Florida, what does she have to say? She says it would have been worse if we hadn't prayed. And I'm not uh, ignoring the fact that it did some damage down in Tampa, but that wall of faith that we built is all along the East Coast. So I'm going to have to get with a group seriously on the West Coast and teach them how to build that wall of faith. As if she's capable of doing anything at all. Honestly sad. Will she ever come back to reality? Let me know what you think in the comments or on Twitter at Telltale Atheist.